essence you are in culture shock the first few times that you come here. You don't realize it very often until you've gone back and had time to readjust yourself to Canadian culture. If China is a culture shock to Curry, the rodeo circuit of Alberta is completely foreign to China's most eminent dinosaur paleontologist. Tom said he'd get your ride on We'll give you a bull ride. Okay. You want to try? Oh. <laughs> try. Good for you. No. Canada is the Great place, Canada. It's not as bad as it right on. Good. There you go. Hi. Cam Southern in the Pine River. But Dong Ziming is in Canada for much more than the chance to wear a cowboy hat. Dale Russell. Dong Ziming works very hard. Um, he's mission-oriented uh, and overcomes difficulties. He's a problem solver. He throws himself into his work and he gets it's it done. It's a lot easier to go from the bottom from the river and across than, than from the top and down. The Badlands of Alberta have their own dragons to protect. This is arguably the richest dinosaur graveyard in North America, home of the Royal Turrell Museum of Paleontology and of Phil Curry, and now a new hunting ground for Dong Ziming. When you do find a dinosaur, because sometimes half of it's still on the cliff, and the other half's at the bottom, <laughs> and uh, the rocks are all angled in funny ways. The Canadian fossils are about 80 million years younger than the finds in the Gobi. Yeah. A good place to camp. And like the Chinese desert, this was not always a wasteland. In the time of the dinosaur, this was a subtropical delta, home of the big plant eaters and of the monsters who chased them. The one thing about uh, the specimen from China that uh, you notice right away is yeah, the I'm third I'm metatarsal. Uh, it's so squeezed out in all the Cretaceous forms, and yet in all the Jurassic ones, it never happens. Yeah. But, um, you know, the phalanges look very much the same with the, the pl pleurocyles and so on. Mm -hmm. I don't see any real difference in, in the tarsals. Yeah. Distal Tars tarsals. Yeah. What? But the stragglers is different. Oh, right. mm -hmm. it's, it's much, much higher here. Mm -hmm. Gives you a real impression for size. Uh, uh, I think they, they, Tyrannosaurus they, 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 rex lived in what is called the late Cretaceous period, uh -huh. about 65 to 70 million years ago. Then he terrorized what was to become the Alberta Badlands. Now he stalks the exhibit hall of the Turl and continues to cast his spell over Phil Curry. My case, I got interested in dinosaurs when I was a kid, and I guess I never grew up. Uh, I always had that fascination, and I probably always will. Um, dinosaurs, I think, attract children because they're so large and bizarre, but unlike the science fiction movies and monster movies and so on that uh, kids like to watch too, dinosaurs are real. For me, it uh, was a conscious decision, and of course, I've gone far enough in the field now to realize that uh, no matter how long I spend in it, there's always going to be new mysteries opening up in front of me, and that uh, I'll never know everything there is to know about dinosaurs, and that uh, adds a certain fascination to it. The theropod skull, which was quarried in the Gobi, has been moved to the Turl Labs to be freed from the rock which has held it since the time before man. What they discover here is that the Chinese giant had a much more primitive structure than Tyrannosaurus rex, confirming that over millions of years, dinosaurs changed dramatically, that dinosaurs were evolving. The brain case on this animal is, is quite primitive. And uh, if we compare it to, say, Tyrannosaurids or Tyrannosaurus and its kin in North America, and uh, Allosaurus from the Jurassic of uh, the United States. It's much closer to an Allosaurus brain case. Uh, it doesn't have the kinds of specializations that we see in Tyrannosaurus rex. And uh, on the bottom, we can see these great big openings still uh, in the bottom of the brain case that are, uh, again, a characteristic you see in more primitive animals. The back of the brain case is dropped off so we can, in fact, look right into the brain case itself. And for an animal that weighed about uh, three or four tons and was anywhere from seven or eight meters in length, um, the width of the brain is only about this, this much, and the length of the brain wouldn't be much more than like that. So it's a relatively small brain for this, this particular animal. This dinosaur may have terrorized the Gobi, but he probably wouldn't have given it much thought. However, 
there were brainier dinosaurs. This little six-foot charmer called Troodon would have been clever enough to outsmart the gigantic T-Rex and certainly his more primitive Chinese cousins. Troodon was equipped not only with muscle, but with that most feared of weapons, intelligence. This drawer contains almost all of the North American identified specimens of Troodon, and it helps explain why we get so excited when we find a partial skull of this animal or little bits and pieces, because it's not a well-known dinosaur. There, there's very few specimens, and yet what we do find are so interesting next to all of the dinosaur specimens that it's really worth taking note of. This is Phil Curry's most treasured fossil, the brain case of Troodon, one of the significant finds of the Canada-China expedition. The brain extends all the way from the back of the skull here, right through this region, uh, with the optic lobes um, centered right about this section right here. So there would have been a little bit more of the brain case covering over this part of the brain, but that's, that's a large brain for an animal that's supposed to be um, quite stupid. Number one, um, if we make a comparison between this brain size relative to the animal's uh, body weight, and you're looking at an animal that would have weighed much less than a, an adult human, uh, the brain size of Troodon is relatively larger than any of the mammals that lived at the same time as this dinosaur, or any of the birds that lived at the same time as this dinosaur. So that's pretty respectable uh, in itself, but even compared to many modern mammals and birds, uh, this is a respectable brain size. At the Foothills Hospital in Calgary, a CT scan so into the innermost passages the of what may have been the smartest dinosaur of them all. The right side and left side. The specimens facing to the left here. Left. Okay. So the right side would be further into the scanner. We can only imagine what this brain would have registered and remembered. What the world would have looked like to the dinosaur we call Troodon. Dinosaur fossils have become a tourist attraction in Alberta, but Dong Ziming is no tourist and can find evidence which would forever escape the weekend browser. Evidence like the footsteps of Troodon. This is a dinosaur footprint, I think. One animal is this one, no, three. One, two, three, select the and one, two, three. How the people? Yeah. 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 Think so? Yeah, it's a small one. Maybe this is a big one. Yeah, so these have three toes. Yeah, three. One, two, three. This two. Two, and this one's definitely a carnivorous dinosaur. Mm. Oh, that's pretty neat. I believe, yeah, this is animal made. Yeah. No nature. No nature. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. It's in the yeah. right kind of mud. Mm -hmm. Although we know that dinosaurs laid eggs, raised their young, and lived on the planet for 150 million years, no one knows why or how they disappeared about 65 million years ago. But if dinosaurs had continued to evolve, what would they have looked like?